In this short tutorial, we're going to make a voltage divider circuit and two parallel legs so we can test our range of an LED and also see the optimal brightness. We're going to start off by laying out all of our components. So let's add a few parts. I've included my libraries already, so make sure that you have these SparkFun libraries, connectors, LED, power symbols, resistors, and switches. I'm going to start by laying down three generic resistors. For this project, we're using part uh, through hole components, so make sure that you check to use that right component. The next step is to add a small potentiometer. Again, make sure it's that part through hole, and we'll use the small nine millimeter. We'll just need one of those. I'll add two generic LEDs. Make sure that they're the five millimeters. I'll need one switch. I'll slide down to momentary switch and we'll use the big 12 millimeter. Make sure that your holes are in this orientation, not on the corners. So make sure it's the 12 millimeter. The last step here is to add our power symbols. I'm going to add an extra ground. This circuit is going to be a 12 volt circuit. And I'll add an extra power. From here, I'm going to start laying out my circuit. Once you have laid out your circuit in the orientation that you like, connect everything using the net tool. This should complete our basic circuit here. Once we bring this to a printed circuit board, we're going to actually have to put in a connector for power. So let's add a two pin connector. So go to add part. We'll go to connectors and connector O2. And I'm gonna just select the extra big pads so I've got a little room to solder. And make sure that they're 0.1 inches apart or 2.54 millimeters. You can select your connector and just place it anywhere you'd like. Now, this is why I've added the extra 12 and ground. I will move those into the right orientation. Now that we have a two pin connector, our circuit should be complete. We have 12 volt supply, same 12 volt supply. So we know that they're connected. Our grounds are also connected as well. So this should power up this entire circuit here. I don't like the way that this switch has a full name. So I'll just go to my value, click on my switch, and I'm just gonna change it to single pole, single throw, 12 millimeter. That looks a little cleaner. Our goal here is to calculate the values for our resistors and our LEDs. When we look at the data sheet for this particular LED, we've got a forward voltage of 1.8 to 2.2 under our forward current uh, test condition of 20 milliamps. So I'm gonna throw this into the schematic just so I have that information. And you can just use a text line and I'm going to put VF equals 1.8 to 2.0, uh, 2.2, and IF equals 20 milliamps. And that'll be a single object that I can move around just so I have that information. Since I know about the range, I also need to select the correct potentiometer value for testing this particular LED. So make sure you select your value and 
This is most likely going to be a 500k or 1k depending on how you create your voltage divider. Okay, your job is to calculate these three resistors. Once we're ready to move this to the circuit board, we just need to collect this SCHBRD switch to board view and we'll say yes. This pulls all the information from our schematic and creates air wires so that it knows what's connected to what. This should look exactly like the parts that we have listed. So our job is to move them. This corner here is going to be our zero, 00. So as we move parts, make sure that you reference this corner. I try to keep my parts off here a little bit. So when I mill this out on the CNC, I have a little room to work with. I'll place the big components first. I'll try to make this as compact as possible. If you don't like the orientation of a particular part, you can right click and rotate. Once you feel pretty good about the orientation of your parts, now we can start creating our traces. Before I do that, I need to go to my design rule check. And the main one I'm gonna worry about now since we have a simplistic PCB, is gonna be my minimum width. And I'm gonna change that to somewhere above 30. I'll hit apply and then select. That's the most important one as we mill out our parts. The rest will be adjusted as we need to. You're welcome to go through the design rule check and look at different options, how close our wires can be, the distance between things and holes. I'll use the route air wire and I can start connecting. I'll zoom in a little bit and I'm just gonna start connecting things that I know are simple connections. Notice that I can go through my parts. Since these are through hole parts, I can go underneath them. If you don't like the way that it's auto orienting your parts, you can click and then move yourself. So I want that to go right in the middle of that potentiometer. Make sure you've completed all your air wires and everything looks pretty good. If you like the way your circuit is laid out, make sure you save it. We'll hit file, save as. And it should have saved our schematic as well. Those are now tied together. When I'm ready to mill this for the PCB, I'll hit file generate cam data and it's going to give me all of the files that i need for the silk screen solder paste solder mask the profile the top the bottom uh, the drill exelon files i'll just manufacture export all of these so that i have the entire job and i'll create a zip archive and pull out the pieces that i need later it'll ask you where you would like to save this for now i'll just drop it on the desktop and you can open up that zip file. You get cam outputs, you get your Gerber files and our drill files. That's what we're gonna need to mill.